Our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody. So, guys, um, <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of things going on in our own personal lives and a lot of changes that we'll give you guys updating, uh, update you guys with. But we're going to start over here, going to look up north, and we see the freeze is lifted on bank accounts linked to Canada protests. Well, that sounds good. Does it not? Yeah, well, yeah, I was like, yay, but then Mike pointed out something. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's obvious, you know, the, the, there is a certain level of damage done. There are, as we think about Santa Claus, making lists, checking it twice, you know, you got the naughty and you got the nice right. list. And, you know, all this is perhaps been covered before, and we've talked about certain projects uh, that are all about making lists and I know I'm being cryptic with that and we'll come back to that and I think it's safe to say though that everybody who participated um, and those that who helped the others participate are now on that list yeah absolutely and no evidence that Ottawa truck protests met requirements for invocation of Canada's emergency act and you know of course there are so many people that can understand exactly what is going on here. Oh, wow. That's an interesting little ad over there. Yeah, sure yeah, it is, you know. Whatever gets taken, like we could go back and look at that very unpatriotic act of 2001, never rescinded. When do you ever see things relinquished? And, you know, we've already been told that it's going to stay there in place, even if things appear to be heading back towards a normalcy, which there is no going back to where we were in the past. You know, this is just, this is a, a headlong rush <laughs> towards the finish line, which is the end of the Kali Yuga. It is, and it, there's going to be some very, very difficult times. I mean, there's really no easy way around this. There's not too many ways around it unless you're able to completely get out of the system. But that's why they spend years and years and years of getting people worked into the system, slow but sure, to make sure that there's something to be taken away when it's time for some sort of punishment. Absolutely. And so, so many things are, are going to be revealed in this great apocalypse. And one of those things is, is exactly the control and how things truly lie and the semblance of having some sort of democratic process where people's voices actually count. Well, you know, that's going to all kind of be revealed as well. Now, this is really the key thing that we want to talk about in this uh, video. We got some info from one of our uh, friends who is uh, connected with uh, a lot of different sources that we trust. And then we check with the guides and the guides were definitely on board. They were like pay very, very close attention here. So the Pentagon approves deployment of National Guard troops for the D.C. trucker convoy protest right so i mean when we were getting this information it's more like you know i get confirmation from the guides and sometimes it's light sometimes it's heavy well this was more like a body slam and they're just really pay attention to this because this is going to open doors for some changes in our in our country and how things are up run absolutely department of defense said that defense secretary uh, lloyd austin approved the deployment of the guards which have been requested by dc metropolitan police department and the u.s capitol police people who live work and visit the district are part of our community their safety is our first mission priority that's that's all well and understood of course but the big thing is are we going to see a replay of what just happened up north in the U.S. with the same sort of power play that came into mm -hmm. being. And this feels, this has a real resonance to it that feels like it really could be the case. So this approval is going to enable about 400 D.C. National Guard members to provide support at designated traffic posts, provide command and control, and cover sustainment requirements. 
Austin also approved the USCP's request for assistance up to 300 National Guard troops from outside the Washington area to help at certain traffic posts and capital entry points as well. That will begin later than 7 a.m. F- uh, Saturday, February 26, according to Breibart, who note that 50 large tactical vehicles will be placed at designated traffic posts on 24-hour basis in the area. John Kirby, the Department of Defense spokesperson, uh, told news outlets in a statement on Tuesday, the department was analyzing a request for assistance from the U.S. Capitol Police and D.C. Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency. Um, you know, so this is most definitely something that we're going to be following very, very closely. And you guys might hear some unusual sounds, you know, d- just chatter from the monkeys that are with us here. And <laughs> anyhow, from yeah, we got a lot of things going on, you guys. A lot of changes. I mean, in all seriousness, it's time that things are, t- you know, they're going to get serious. This change has to happen for for the other changes to occur. And when I say other changes, I mean the more positive changes where people are actually able to work with each other one-on-one, speak to each other, eye-to-eye, help each other in a more physical way, express our love and, and understanding to one another in a physical way. And I think that's something that we have lost over the years with all of this technology, which is Well, it was brought into our lives in the form of something to help us, something to assist us. But really, have we, has it really helped us spend more time with each other? Does it help us have those moments with one another and with our family members that are tender, that are memorable? I don't feel that these technologies have have done that. I think it's kind of hindered that. And so we're just checking in the feed, Adelanto. California, as you can see, people starting to come together, and we have truckers starting to line up here. This is the People's Convoy. The thing is, this might be just one of what turns out to be many and turns out to be a significant movement. And over here, we see 10 a.m. today, the People's Convoy convoy will depart Adelanto, California, en route to D.C., First stop tomorrow is Kingman, Arizona. We know that area really well. Yeah. Been through there a million times, about two hours from Vegas. One of multiple truck convoys happening inspired by the disruptive Canadian convoy protesting you-know-what. And this is the route that they're going to take. So it's it's going to go through, cut right across Arizona. Boy, we've done that trip so many times. Go through Albuquerque, as you see, comes straight through uh, the Texas northern texas area then cut through oklahoma head towards wichita and go through indianapolis on way to dc and this right here is the people's convoy as you see they got over four hundred sixty four thousand dollars in donations and this has all the info um that you would want Mm -hmm. including stops and the the website again is uh, the people's convoy dot org. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, this feels like it's just the beginning of something. And, of course, NP is very carefully monitoring this. Yeah. You know, you know, she was trying to give a geography lesson today and, and she's getting all confused about exactly where Ukraine is and Hungary and isn't it amazing that these politicians that are supposed to be so in the know, they don't even know where certain countries are? No, they don't. And that's because they haven't learned the things that we have learned growing up. They learn other things like how to seize power and control of people. Absolutely. And, you know, in the times to come, I want to go back to that Hopi um, prophecy talking about how the power structure is going to be different because it's going to be done through people that show where their hearts are that that show those that show that they care about others they care about the masses they they care about the average person perhaps even at the expense of themselves in some ways those are the ones that are going to be selected you know to serve the the masses it's it's not going to be about who lies the most it's not going to be about who's in secret societies getting placed into positions of power uh, quite the opposite. It's not going to be about the biggest ego, 
uh, how well you could trash your opponent, you know, trash talking. And they're going to thankfully be a thing of the past. And these career politicians that really, in so many ways, when I look at them, I, I just think of ticks and leeches, that mm -hmm. parasites that are living off other beings and knowing that they, in so many ways, are just serving their own interests. Right, and, and it's not like they're even just sort of barely making a living at it. No, no, no. They're in these giant mansions with gold covered everything and they're eating the best of the best food. They're not worried one bit about how they're going to pay the bills next week or how that car payment's going to get made, how dinner, what dinner is going to be put on the table. They never worry about anything like that. But these times are fading. It's just walking through it might be and seem a little difficult, but that happens with change. Things get rearranged and they can be confusing. But as long as our intent is to hold our heart chakras first and raise the vibration of the world in which we live, then we have to allow these changes to occur and kind of almost be in a state of gratitude while these changes are made, I think is important too. You know, and, and that makes me want to just like say something because if you are developing spiritually and your light body is activated you are a target for the dark forces and they can see you so again think about it and we were just having this conversation with somebody that just said um that they had a tough time they felt like they were kind of spiritually attacked yes and again what is spiritual warfare it's an interdimensional warfare there's beings that are right here, just not perceptive in the visible spectrum of light. Doesn't mean they're not there. Well, yeah. I mean, let's considering the spec light spectrum is huge. Can we just see this little teeny tiny sliver of the light spectrum? So it's like 10% we see, and then there's 90% that we can't see, but it's, it's there. And we'll go over this in upcoming videos as well in more depth. Because we want to get you guys to understand where, you know, so many of the old um, sayings and scriptures and myths and legends, they're totally based in, in fact and truth. They might be slightly distorted. Maybe they don't have the clarity that we need. But absolutely, when you're talking about spiritual warfare, again, it, it, it's referencing things that are not in the visible light spectrum. It doesn't mean that they're not there. They are there. And they view you like when... We've had so many interactions, countless interactions with beings on different densities. And it's mostly because we attract them because we're, our light bodies are activated and we're like bright shining lights. So when they walk past people, if you guys have ever seen any photos of orbs, let me, let me just pull this up. I'm going to go off that yeah i mean i guess there you do need to understand you know our light bodies this this is the thing that's happening is the most important thing is that our light bodies are being activated and once that happens then you can start to understand that there's more to this realm than meets the eye that's when you start perceiving all these things around you and this is how they've stayed in control for so long They've been able to keep us, you know, in this space. Well, there's only these things in the 3D and all the science classes we went to and all the scientific studies that that have ever been written are based in this information that is fit, that fits inside of this little bitty box. And if it doesn't fit inside of this little bitty box, well, then it doesn't it doesn't exist. And that's how they've kept control. Just to give you a for instance, so when you see these orbs, and yes, some orbs could be nothing but just dust and specks like that. But then there are orbs that if you look closely, you'll see they have faces in them. And it's because they are beings, they're people. So when we're out of the body, when we're first out of the body, a lot of times we have the tendency to hold the form of the body. So that's where you have people that appear to be like ghosts. You know, ghosts, ghost-like shapes that are very, very humanish. Over time, you know, we'll, our consciousness will change and we'll just basically become an orb, so to speak. And this is how we get about. We're just a, a singular point of consciousness and a drop, a drop of water in an ocean of consciousness. Now, this is what most people would look like. You can see this one's a little bit brighter. Some are a little bit brighter. Some are not so bright. When your light body is activated, when your Merkaba is activated... You're like that. 
So it's a big difference. These beings, like when they look at us, they don't necessarily see us like we see each other. We see each other as being very, very solid. To them, we look either kind of like this, or if we look like that, we're a problem because this is a being that's fully activated. Their light body is 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 advancing and they're going to the next level. Right. And this is also someone that can teach others about how to go to the next level and that's what they're trying to stop. Exactly. So we could take all these beings and say, you know, hey, you know, you're progressing, you're getting brighter, you're getting brighter. Let us show you the way and it's all through your resonance and your vibration. And you too can become like this. Now when our Merkaba is really fully activated, then again, we don't have to stay in the 3D, 4D loop like most people go through. You know, you, you die, you're on 4D. You make your, you first kind of do a life review, learn the lessons, and then come back. Depends on intentions and karma and also just your mission as well. Now, when your Merkaba is activated, you don't have to come back again to another 3D loop. You, you can stay in 5D. You could explore anywhere. You could go outside of our galaxy you could go anywhere you want to go and all you have to do is think about it and it's like a wormhole appears you flash of lights and colors and then there you are mm -hmm. all right i mean this is something that we can do now you know but it's it's not understood that way and this is the teachings that we've grown up with to make us feel like we are unable to break out of this system and all this that we see going on right now is all about freedom for the soul, ultimately. Because the body, again, is just a temporary vessel. It's just something that we're in to experience this 3D reality. But again, we have much, much higher possibilities directly ahead of us. And this is what they're trying to do is to keep us locked down. They want us wandering around, not living up to our full potential. Whereas Source, God with the big G, is, is doing everything it can to help us to overcome these, these dark beings in this dark matrix. And again, it comes through the sun. There's a reason why this, this sky's been sprayed for decades. There's many layers to that reason. And part of it is just simply blocking out the light from interacting with you, activating your light body activating your consciousness, triggering the pineal gland, and allowing you to really see with the, the third eye, which leads to truly knowing. So, you know, Nancy is carefully monitoring this. And, and this feels like a, a one six event all, all over again, but on a bigger scale is again, always looking for that reason and of course we talked about the Lusitania. we talked about the plans to uh, basically bomb Miami and then blame it on Cuba back in the 60s in order to get an invasion of Cuba you know it goes down and down and, and the, the people who are on board the Titanic that didn't want the banking system to be the way it is now mm -hmm. you know we could just call uh, what we call them, BS banners, yeah. We could we could just see one BS banner after another. We sure could, and go on down the line. And, you know, by keeping us in a state of chaos, by keeping us in a state of confusion and stress, these are all the things that block our ability to activate that light body and find our freedom. So it's very important they keep throwing this stuff at us. But as long as we know to put ourselves first, then there's nothing they can do to stop it. Absolutely. And Google Maps location data of Freedom Convoy donors posted online. Yeah. Isn't this? Wow. You know, what do you say about this? Look at this. This is everybody that, that donated all their information right there online. As we said, making a list, checking it twice. CCP is going to find out who's been naughty or nice. Yep, yep. I, I hope this what we're on rumble too <laughs> xi jinping is coming oh, to I'm town we're in trouble now <laughs> and of course he's he's another puppet too he's just another face but but this is the mechanism that they want to use and we have the russian ambassador warning ordinary americans are about to feel the pain oh, 
Now, now what he's talking about is the sanctions and the the being cut off. Because again, if you've been following that whole pipeline thing over in Europe, Europe's very dependent on Russian energy, and now we're ostracizing Russia. So, you know, we're effectively cutting them off. And sure, it's going to be painful, but BRICS has been laying the groundwork for this for a long time. The the economic group BRICS, which I had talked about back in 2017, and how they're paving the way for this cutoff. It's been just something that's been going on, and, and they're prepared. They understand this is part of it. This is why they've been getting out of uh, us. They've been disassociating themselves with the U.S., and they've been building up gold reserves, and they've been building up all sorts of currency reserves. Meanwhile, they've been bankrupting the U.S. and putting us into tremendous debt because they're going to collapse the whole system. And yes, you know, for the most part, we've had it pretty good in the U.S. and in, in Western Europe, standard of living and everything. But that's changing. It's rapidly changing. And if you look at some of the other countries, especially, I mean, you, you go look at Dubai, you look at, um, you know, Singapore, you look at some of these Asian countries and what their what their major cities look like. And then you go drive around New York City and, and it's like, wow, you know, our infrastructure is pathetic. You know, the trains and the mass transit is pathetic. Um, where's nothing's changed here in that sense. And so, you know, it's been a slow decline for us, but now everything is going to ratchet up and this is going to hit us hard. And, and I'm feeling a lot coming through the crown chakra here. Um, so I think the guides are, are really trying to say, brace yourselves, guys, brace yourselves, be ready. You know, we've, we've talked about being ready. Sticker shock, gas climbs over six bucks a gallon in, in Los Angeles, you know, everything is going to impact us. And here we see that highly lethal bird flu detected in Delaware pro poultry. Again, food supply, everything going through the roof and fierce cold wave sweeps East Asia. Chinese city sees first snow since 1893. Dangerously cold temperatures hit U.S. and Canada. Um, Mount Etna blasted off again. I think that was at yeah seven miles high you know not as high as not what we saw in tonga tonga changed everything and we keep getting that from the guides tonga changed everything and that was not a naturally occurring event and everything now has shifted dramatically and, and we will see still we'll see record highs and we'll see record lows and we're going to see incredible swings uh going on and if we look down here, you can see the KP index uh, back on the 22nd. We, we had a minor geomagnetic storm again. Uh, you know, the sun is a little ahead of schedule, but that's because the sun is a relay for source. And it's trying to help us as much as possible overthrow this dark uh, matrix that we're in. As we see the record cold in Gulf of the U.S. Yeah, I was looking at last night and uh, it's like taking the ch the tomato plants. You know, I was out there in the middle of the night going and picking up some plants that we had left out because it was like a 25 degree swing. And we're, we'll see more of these swings. Yeah, I mean, they're going to do everything they can to keep us in a state of confusion. You know, but don't forget, we do have the sun and we have that energy to bring us these abilities to find our center a lot faster this is all about evolution so we're we're going to get there it's about baby steps it's about making connections it's about connecting with people who can help one another and just going around the system and yes as we've reiterated before we have a a magnetic pole reversal underway you know those things take enormously long periods of time but there is, you know, also the thought um, that they sometimes occur faster than, you know, we expect. But again, we do get that it's going to be that big blast from the sun that triggers it. And then the earth is going to be remade. Um, now, I know, um, I, forget, I always forget what the name of that channel is. People always are talking about him. Uh, he says about 13 months until it happens. Uh, Maverick. Maverick, yeah, yeah. Um, we don't get that. We, we've asked the guides many times, you know, they still feel we're looking at more like the middle of the 2040s. So it's not our number one 
things staring us in the face, you know, the number one thing is geopolitical and uh, Big Brother. You know, that's obviously the number one thing. And then also just simply food supply and resources. And yes, the earth changes will continue and they will continue to be augmented. We know that. There's a lot of artificial flavoring in this world. And Madagascar has its fourth tropical cyclone in a month. The jet stream is moving northwards. And the winter jet stream increased by 8%. So this is, again, part of the changing times. And we've also gotten that when we do have that mag big magnetic pole reversal that leads to more than likely there will be crustal displacement events and everything is going to shift. You will have what Casey and so many others have seen. Um, Mother Shipton spoke of the fact that the earth is going to be washed clean and there's going to be totally new land masses that appear. And that's where people are going to be doing the best. These new land masses are going to be so fertile. That, that people uh, will be heading over there. The survivors will be coming together over there and, and inhabiting these new zones. And we have a 6.3 earthquake hits the Beleni Islands region. This is in the Southern Ocean, as you can see where that is located below Australia. And a 6.0 in Argentina at intermediate depth. Yeah, I know these are just more things that we're going to keep paying attention to. But um, ultimately, yeah, we all just really have to brace for change right now. So the Pentagon says Nintendo generation has weak skeletons. Mm. And this hit me immediately because we got information from the guides. Oh, I guess it was about two months ago that was saying that, you know, our body changes are happening rapidly now. Yeah. The DNA is changing rapidly again. L look at all the hominids that have been on this planet that are no longer here. And we even have the WEF, and we talked about this, saying this is the last generation of Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. The World Economic Forum saying this is the last generation of Homo sapiens. And I don't doubt it. And it would be the last generation of Homo sa sapiens even if they weren't doing what they're doing. But if they weren't doing what they're doing, the next one that comes out would be like Homo Superman <laughs> you know, in comparison to what we are now, because we would be regaining so much of that, quote unquote, junk DNA, which is not junk. It's just been turned off, deactivated. Well, it's being reactivated. They know this. And again, that's that's why everything is going on that 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 they're doing is they need to keep us compliant and well basically easy to manipulate maneuver and to trick and it's going to be the case with our abilities increasing and our psychic senses turned on that you know we're going to know immediately when somebody's telling us something that's not true and many of you feel that and see that right now i know there's many times when um I just don't have a tolerance. I can't watch certain beings on TV and then other times I can't I can't really tolerate <clears throat> things when I can feel there's so much deceit there. It just it hurts, you know, it really hurts. And a lot of people are going through that now. They're starting to realize, hey, what are all these emotions about? Why why is this happening to me? How come I, I'm feeling this way? You know, what is this coming from? And it's coming from your senses becoming more and more sensitive and it's okay but then that's why we have to find the time to do the mantras and the meditation to allow these energies to slowly integrate into our 3d body that's really really important to find some comfort with what's going on and now we have scientists talking about three and four strand dna you didn't find that 20 30 years ago but it's because all these changes are happening. They're real. When we talked about the skeletal structure, this is one of the things that the guides came through. And they said that our skeletal structure is getting lighter. It's getting less dense. It's, it's obviously that's what's going to happen because when you get up in the fifth density, you're really operating out of a light body. Everything about us <laughs> should be getting less dense. Yeah. 
Not necessarily the case with everybody out there, though. Right. There's a lot of people who are just the opposite. Yeah. And so what they're doing is trying to make us more dense. Right. Again, it's all about being able to control the flock, the herd. Listen to the shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what they're trying to get everyone to do. Be compliant. Simon says, this on. Simon says, this off. Simon says, this on. This off. Oh, Simon didn't say. Now you're on the naughty list. Yeah, now you're going to get um, hurt financially or something like this. So this is serious. They, they say that they're finding that uh, this generation, and they, they, they call them the Nintendo generation, which is a misnomer, I guess. What is it? Where are we up to PS5s? I have no idea. I, I haven't played since, you know, like 20, some, 20 years yeah. when, when my kids were young. Um, but it, it, that we're not physically active. We're not up to par. And they literally do have weak skeletons. They're more prone to injuries. And I said to Cindy, too, because there was a rash of MMA fighters like Anderson Silva broke his leg. Chris Weidman broke his leg. It could happen that you break your leg. But I think a lot of it has to do with the fact of density. Everything is changing. Our whole structure is changing. We're evolving into something new. Right. And our abilities are getting stronger. So that means when we have thoughts when we have feelings, when we have emotions, and we even just imagine a certain scenario, all of these things are more like entities and they go out into the ether and they take shape and they take form. And this is how our reality is created. So we're getting much stronger, not just uh, with our thoughts, words, actions, and deeds, but out there in the ether, our, our creative abilities are becoming far stronger than they used to be. Absolutely. And our ability to jump timelines, which is something they are terrified of. So, yes, we are definitely changing, mutating. We're, we're going to become something new. And humanity is going to divide in two. And it will be a case where there will be those that follow the controllers and will follow the controllers of the controllers that will show themselves. And I, I again, expect, I think I keep getting five to seven years and, and they will have um openly acknowledge different ets in the in the open publicly publicly even show them to you um and then when the controllers come back openly in mass in the future as well then they're going to offer you amazing things life extension possibilities maybe med beds all sorts of things but you're going to have to be compliant with certain things and again it's going to be your choice either to ascend naturally or to go into that Borg AI uh, control grid. Right, and everybody has choices and everybody has a path. And it's really important you weigh that for yourself, though, because I don't want to say any one person's path is right or wrong, but it's important that you're in alignment with your soul and your spirit because that's when things feel right and you're experiencing to the best of your ability and your highest potential. Absolutely. Always connect to your guides. How do you do that? Well, a lot of you can. I mean, everybody we talk to and, and we go through so many people, we've worked on thousands of people. Um, I'd say the majority can connect with their guides. Yeah, they, they can and do connect with their guides. So it might sound to some out there uh, when we're talking about guides that it's, it's woo woo or what have you. Well, it's just a matter of ability. And, and again, if, you, if you're drinking fluoridated water, if you're eating all sorts of GMO foods, if you live off of McDonald's and Subway, and you're taking all certain big FARMAs, yeah, it's going to seem woo-woo because your consciousness is extremely limited and you just can't sense and see things that are right there, but you know, outside of the normal perspective. Now, if you've worked on it, You've done meditation, yoga, qigong, perhaps past life work as well. You've eaten clean. You've steered clear of all things that can alter your perception and, and lower your perception. Then you might have clear communication with your guides right now. You might be getting you know clear messages, visions. Many do. And, and it doesn't matter what your dogma is or if you don't have any dogma at all. That has nothing to do with it. Because this is all about frequency and vibration. Like Tesla said, the mysteries of the universe, it's all about energy, frequency, vibration. You know, and a lot of people ask, well, what do I, <clears throat> I got to do to 
to, to have this happen, the most important thing is to heal your soul. Once you heal your soul, your physical body, your spirit, your traumas, then all of these things come about just naturally. We all can do it. Absolutely. So guys, thank you so much for your support over on Patreon and Ko-Fi. Also do check out Medicinal Foods. Use coupon code EEA. Get a discount and also supports the channel. Help you with detoxing. Um, you go, go and check out over on Medicinal Foods. Go and check out their pineal decalcifying program as well. There's a lot of good articles here. Um, good people. Again, they've been with the channel since the beginning. There you go. Pineal awakening protocol. That's that. That'll get you started. And if you do need to make an appointment with us, it's evolutionaryenergyarts.com. And you can reach us at evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail. Much love. Be prepared out there. God bless and namaste. Namaste.